Yo, what's going on guys? JBH here and today I'm back on R Factor 2 where I'm kicking off a full weekend's worth of racing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but I'm not going to be racing on the rectangle or oval, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be racing on the road course layout. Now the Grand Prix of Indianapolis takes place each year as a sort of precursor to the big one, the Indy 500 itself. And on that weekend, they have the entire road to Indy competing, uh, which involves the USF 2000 category, the Indy Pro 2000 category, the Indy Lights category and of course the uh, IndyCar series race on Sunday. I have got a mod on R Factor 2 that you can find on the Steam Workshop if you do have R Factor 2. Uh, it's just the USF 2000 base mod car so it doesn't actually have all the skins or drivers that compete in the series. There are a couple different sort of baseline paint schemes but for the most part yeah it is just the mod and the car itself. It is a pretty insanely realistic mod I must admit having driven some sort of low powered open wheel cars in real life but yeah we'll start today in the USF 2000 category I'll go and race the Indy Pro 2000 category tomorrow, Indy Lights and then of course Indy Car uh, to round it all up. So yeah without any further ado I'm going to jump into a qualifying session in the USF 2000 car and yeah we'll see how we go. Okay, so qualified six, not too bad, couple tenths off. Uh, there's 22 AI cars in total, so out of a pack of 22, we're somewhat towards the front. Now this race is gonna be 20 minutes in length, which is around half of what the sort of real life road to indie races are, well, at least for the um, USF 2000 category. Uh, difficulty set to 115%, AI aggression set to 40% damage on max. Uh, these cars are pretty indestructible from what I've seen so far. Having said that though, we don't wanna go pluck a wheel out of alignment or lose a front wing like most of the guys do in real life in this category to be honest this especially this first corner this first corner is hectic every year something happens anyway that's enough talk we'll jump onto the grid and get underway it is a rolling start of course in the uh, sort of usf 2000 category well all american motorsports really Alrighty, here we go usf 2000 around the indianapolis motor speedway we're on pre-track oh, we gotta run thread the needle Oh, this is not going to end well. Great, nice and early, give him plenty of room. Ah, oh. uh, terrible first curb. Now we go through this sort of rhythm section. So we can sneak up the inside. Alright, we've got to get single file because there is one high speed chicane coming up. Do not want to be going side by side through there. Alright, now onto the sort of Back stretch, we called it. Get in that draft. I uh, can't quite outbreak the AI around here. Ah, uh, shouldn't have gone down a second. All right, but well, we gained two spots. We got an awesome jump. Mate's made a mistake in front. Get a good run onto the straight. Oh, almost had a moment there. All right, now this is definitely one of the biggest drafts you get in the whole of the sort of road to Indy, besides maybe Road America. to the podium spots. Just gonna head down, see if we can catch these two, two in front. Try not to let them get away. Ooh. You hit the first one, but the second one is gnarly. screwing that corner up problem here is if you stick a wheel off it just drags you off the track like you just get sucked onto the grass it's really weird but it it's realistic because in real life when I made a mistake like these lot have it definitely drags you off the track come on all right get this mega draft One place you didn't want to be was a sitting duck. I think we're a little bit too far behind. 
150 miles an hour. Also got to watch out, watch out for the aero wash through there, because if you get that second curb wrong, it just sends you vertical. We got a good run. Oh, he's gonna fight us for it. We're on the outside. Woo. Oh, too much curb. All right, well we have the lead. For now, still got three quarters of the race left. pretty good in a straight line I must admit I didn't really flatten the aero out just, just hope it's not too bad on the tire Can't go to the left of that ripper stripper. Uh, factor two just gives me a um, cut track penalty. Oh uh, come on! All right, let's see if we can build a gap. Gap slowly but surely. Ah, hate that sound. Nothing worse than the sound of it. Open wheel car bottoming out. <sighs> Man, it is hot in here. On the floor. Oh, that was close. That's right, we're still getting away from the guys in second, though. It's so hard to get that last corner right. I'm sort of guessing the whole way there. I keep taking too narrow an entry. Right, well, we are just running away with this one. Easy peasy. Just keep it on the black stuff.
So, now we got a gap. A little fun story about this car. I remember, well, I was actually testing for Team Belfry at the time, which I she don't even know if they're in the Road Dandy anymore, but um, I was testing in what was the Pro Mazda category, so with the old Star Mazda car. And this is back in 2016. Yeah, the end of the 2016 season. I'd been competing in Pro Mazda that year. And um, they just announced this car being released. And at the end of the year, they do this uh, test week weekend at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on this road course, the very track I'm racing on now. And it was so funny watching all the teams scratch their heads and trying to get these cars built and running right because this was sort of a huge sort of stepping stone in the American, well, road to Indy scene, American open wheel scene, entry level open wheel scene when they introduced these cars because they're so much more so much more modern compared to what the old USF 2000 car was and even the old Pro Mazda car before they got the new PM18 or if you call it new anymore I mean this car is four years old now so I doubt you could call this one new yeah watching these engineers and mechanics try and you know deal with all the electronics and whatnot and I remember only one car could get its pit limiter working the rest of them were like screw it we'll just leave it out we'll just Get the drivers just roll down pit lane. But yeah, no, these. This is a fun car. It's a fun mod, I must admit. The car does hand handle pretty realistic. Oscillates a little bit too much through the corner. Feels a little bit too disconnected, but for the most part, it's okay. AI seem to be struggling behind us. They're a lot slower in the race than what they were in qualifying. But in terms of this track mod, um, for the most part it's pretty up to date. I mean nothing has really changed at IMS since when they came out with this track. It's not laser scanned. But it's pretty damn close to the real thing. At least I think it's not laser scanned. Definitely doesn't look quite right compared to what, well, when I drove it. For example, this wasn't so much uphill, it was more downhill onto the straight. Yeah. I do love this track. This track is absolutely insane. I mean, when you, if you haven't been here in real life, you should definitely put it on your bucket list. Because this place is literally it's so weird it's like you're in some sort of Colosseum but it's not a small Colosseum it's just a huge one yeah when you go in there I mean it's it just you can fit so much inside this complex oh it took too much curve that time But it's kind of eerie when you go testing around here because it's, well, it's all empty. So when you first get there, it's just this massive complex, all these grandstands, all this, that, and the other, and it's just, no one's there. It's kind of weird. I mean, there are people that go and visit the museum. In fact, the museum around here is insane as well. If you ever get to go here, definitely, well, the museum's sort of by the admin building anyway, so. Anyway. We've got seven minutes left and we've got a five second gap, so we're running away with this one, lads. Definitely not the most entertaining of races. It was a good start, but <laughs> maybe I set the AI a little bit too low. I had it at 110%, but I was like two seconds quicker than everyone else, so I upped it, but obviously upped it. Well, I didn't up it enough. I definitely don't have the same pace in the 
Indy Pro 2000 cars, they now call it. Did a practice session in that before, and that car handles completely different to this. Starting to lose a little bit of tyre grip. Oh, those fronts are wearing a lot quicker than the rears. getting hot in the UK right now. I've got the windows open for the first time. The problem is it's night and it's letting all the bloody bugs in. been a quick lap. We almost got a 10 second lead now. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Definitely set the AI difficulty a little bit too low, but anyway. If I'd set it any higher, we would have been dead last in qualifying. I don't know why the AI is so much slower here in the race, but. Oh well, it is what it is. Well, we have 2 minutes and 45 seconds to go, so we get 2 more laps. much curb and I love me some curbs but not that much curb
should be the last lap. You may have actually noticed that all you can hear going down that straight is the wind. It's because I got, um, it's pretty neat. Well, it's not really a mod, but it's this sort of sound configuration settings I found off a guy on Race Department. And it just completely changes the audio in this game. And it's so much more realistic. I mean, when you drive an open wheel car, especially when your head's sticking out, um, I don't know what it's like now with all these halos and aero screens, it's becoming more and more popular, but certainly the traditional open wheel car, all you can hear is wind. You barely hear the engine once you get up to speed, especially when you're going sort of 140, 150. At the low speed and uh, corners, and when you sort of start it up, you can hear it, but once you get up to speed. In fact, the only time you can really hear it is when you sort of are up against um, a barrier or wall like, like what you were just then. Especially around here when you're going up down the main straight. You're sort of right up against the wall and that reverb just reverbs off the wall and all you can hear is sort of like what it is now. But anyway, that is time expired so that should be the checkered flag and it is 12 seconds was the gap, man. Yeah, I definitely set the AI way too, um, <laughs> way too slow, but anyway, it is what it is. Uh, I do miss driving at this track, but anyway, that's that, lads. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for the Indy Pro 2000 race. I'm going to do that tomorrow, and hopefully we come up with a decent result in that. That's totally different to this. I'm not as fast in that as what, what I am in this, and, uh, yeah, the car is completely different in terms of handling. So, yeah, stay tuned for that, and until next time, I'll catch you guys later.